these lots of different rooms in this house. We were just going on the base, but it was amazing. It's like, I didn't realize it was this big up there. Um, and this is the stairway that goes up now. Um, his office was, his, there were, there were, No, so we lowered the curtains so that oh, we yeah, could show so his windows. Oh, no, it's beautiful. Yeah, we're, we're slowly getting it all rebuilt. I mean, yeah. you know, we, as be best we can so that it's as... This would have probably been, what, don't you think, the main bedroom? Probably. Could be. Yeah, it's, it's big, so I don't yeah. think it's a... But yeah, this is a, probably the parents' Yeah, there was a bit 
the middle of the state, which would be here. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to have a house that was worthy of all those fancy people coming. Right. You know, so he made it way up here, you know, so you can look and look. You can well, see this is definitely yeah. fancy. Yes, it was. Yeah. And there, there weren't a lot of trees in those days. So you could see way off, you know, all over out here and see for Long ways. You could see a lot of the different buildings and yeah. stuff. Building. But I remember in pictures, which you'll see, that, that these trees, a lot of, there were some trees over on this side. Mm -hmm. and, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have pictures of them out there. Yeah. And they had friends that lived right here where Franco's is now. Another family. So they had some really good friends. They had the, um, the Hargises had, I told you they had the cow and the horse. They had the first bicycle, woman's bicycle in town. And they had the first car. I can, I can do that. I've got the genealogy. I'll look yeah, okay. Um, yeah, because um, everything we've got says that she bought the house. I don't know, maybe that's right there. Well, that, that was his first wife. Yeah, I know. yeah. yeah. Um, was I, she, I don't think she was still alive. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't want to repeat everything again. If everyone else is interested, then I'll. Yes, we will be. It's wonderful. It's, it's, it's easier, easier to do it once. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it could be that maybe it was something different and they modified it too. You never know that your dad told you to do Well, I mean, that was the It's just written. Yeah. I don't know, do you have a want to see the basement and what's down there or not? Or? Sure. It's up to you guys. Want to see the basement? Oh, yes. Please. Now, I want you to. Somewhat of a prepared presentation, but uh, interruptions, I, again, I, I don't mind. So, sort of to start off, um, and thank you for the introduction, Sherry. Uh, I'm going to go back a generation before my grandfather. I'm going to go back to my great-grandfather, who was a, um, my great-grandfather was, was born in Wisconsin. In uh, 1943, he enlisted in the Wisconsin 7th for the Civil War. Um, the Wisconsin 7th, if you're not familiar with it, was also called the Iron Brigade. Um, at some of the uh, Civil War sites, particularly in Gettysburg, there are at least two or three monuments for the Wisconsin 7th. And so my, my great-grandfather had been in a couple of other battles, had been somewhat injured in some of those. The first day of Gettysburg, July 1st, 19, or I think 19, right, 1863, uh, he was shot through both eyes with a musket ball, um, was leaned up against a tree, was bayoneted, and lived there for three days until he was rescued and actually, he fought for the, for the North. Um, 
a Confederate actually saved his life, uh, gave him uh, coffee. And then he went to the hospital there in Gettysburg. If you're ever in Gettysburg, um, there was a chapel called Seminary Ridge. It, is, it was turned into a hospital. And in that building is now a museum. Uh, there's, there's a gigantic mural of my great-grandfather. His name was Francis Jefferson Coates. Um, I did not know how many people were going to be here. Uh, I appreciate all of you coming. Um, we only put together six copies of a presentation. So if you have a presentation in front of you and someone else hasn't seen it, please hand it around. Um, because some of the pictures in there are of my uh, are of my great grandfather. Um, after after his his injuries were taken care of, he went to the Philadelphia School of Blind. Uh, he took away and trained back to Wisconsin. Uh, he was where he was married. Uh, he received the Medal of Honor. Um, in 19, uh, 1966, I apologize. Um, and then in 1871, he took a wagon train to Dorchester, Nebraska. By then, he had had two children, my grandfather, uh, Francis Jefferson Coates Jr., who changed his name to Frank legally after he was of age. Um, there was a daughter that was born, unfortunately she died when she was 10. He had three other children um, born in Dorchester. Uh, he is buried in Dorchester. Um, and there was a book, if anyone has any interest whatsoever, um, called The Memory of Light. It was written about my great-grandfather. Um, and it's pretty pretty fascinating book if any of you are, are inclined to history lessons. Um, so my grandfather was born in uh, 1868, and I, I never have figured out how to pronounce this word, so maybe if somebody can correct me. Is it Boscobel or Boscobel, Wisconsin? Does anybody know? I meant to look it up, but I didn't. I, I, I think it's basketball or basketball. Um, when he was, so then they, then again, then they took the wagon train to, to Dorchester. Um, and when he was 17 years old, my grandfather moved to Omaha, Nebraska, where he worked a couple of jobs. Uh, he went to a, a school to, to learn some accounting and, and business uh, stuff. I think it was called the Omaha School of Business or something like that. Um, when he was 23, he bought his first company uh, called the Omaha Book and Stationery Company. By then, uh, he, was, he was married. His first wife was Mary, and, I, and, and we had a discussion uh, about this when we were doing a tour of the house. There's a, there's a uh, picture, and it indicates that his wife, Mary, actually bought this house. So I don't know if his wife ended up buying it or he bought it, but, uh, uh, but his first wife was, was Mary. Uh, he then bought, uh, a year later in 1892, he bought another stationary company in Omaha. In 1894, he bought the Omaha Tetanani Company. In, 19, in 1898, he opened the Mercer Hotel in Omaha, Nebraska. In 1899, he bought the Kohler Hotel here in Grand Island. In 1909, he bought the Dolan Fruit Company. Then he bought another bank in, is it pronounced Ravina? Ravina. In 1912, he bought this house May 1st of 1913, or his wife did, whichever <laughs> is the case. Uh, uh, 
Uh, his, uh, his first wife died um, in 1917. They were living in a house by then, of course. Uh, then he married uh, my grandmother, uh, Harriet uh, Ferris, in 1918. And so while uh, they were living in this house, um, my Uncle Stan was born in 1919. My father was born in 1922. And then they can obviously continue to, to reside here. Unfortunately, uh, my grandfather uh, had uh, a lot of disastrous things happen to him. The Dolan Fruit Company, and there's, for those of you that are handing around the, the material we put together, there's a picture of the Dolan Fruit Company. It was three stories high. It burned to the ground in, on December 15th of 1924. The story is that it, with, with everything else to burn, a million pounds of sugar burned. Mm -hmm. So he lost, he lost everything. Mm -hmm. he, had then, uh, he then bought another bank in 1926, and by then he had also opened the Grand Island National Bank in 1924. Is also president of Farmer State Bank in Scotia. I think that's how it's pronounced. The Grand Island National Bank also burned to the ground in either 1929 or early 1930. I'm not sure of the exact date. It was on the ground floor of a three-story building and again sort of lost, lost everything. Gave away over $100,000 of his own money to help the residents of Grand Island. And then he died when he was 64, five years old in 1934 on the streets of Grand Island. At that time, my father was 12 years old and sort of an interesting sidebar. I don't know how interesting, but my great grand my, my great grandfather died when my grandfather was twelve years old. And then my grandfather died when my when my dad was twelve years old. They tried to live in the house. My grandmother was a professional musician, um, so she gave piano lessons, but as you can probably imagine from the house. Uh, we could not afford to keep it, so they ended up selling it for a pittance during the Great Depression. So that's basically what I know about my great-grandfather. Obviously, since he died in 1934, I never had a chance to meet him. Uh, so before I go on to sort of the next chapter, does anybody have any questions at this point? that I can try to answer. Well, there was Stan, and how many children were in here at that time? Was there any well, time? the, um, <coughs> when, my, when my grandfather bought the house, he was obviously, he was married to his first wife. They had four children. Okay. And so they, they grew up in a house, but they had, they had moved away because of their, because of their ages. Mm -hmm. So then when he married my grandmother, then Stan, who's the oldest son, and my father grew up here. I don't know an awful lot about um, my grandfather's uh, first family. I do know one of them. Um, his second son, my grandfather's second, second son from his first marriage, uh, if this doesn't get too confusing. Um, his, his, one of his uh, siblings, not siblings, um, so my grandfather's uh, second son from his first marriage was named um, Neli Coates. <clears throat> Neli had a son, also called Neli, who is actually still alive. So he is the only one on sort of that side of the family that I've ever had a chance to meet. I did meet one of his other cousins, 
um, but I'm not sure exactly exactly what that lineage was because she would have been a cousin from his first marriage. Any other questions right now? So they bought this house when it was already built? Yes, uh, because my grandfather bought it from Hargis. So we were okay, uh, we were actually talking talking about that earlier. Um, and somehow he and Hargis knew each other. I don't, I don't know whether it was through the banks, whether it was through the fruit company, or what, what relationship they had business-wise. Uh, but my understanding is that he, they, knew each, they knew each other. And I think when, what I was told was when Hargis decided to move to California, am I getting the story anywhere near Yes, yes. Um, when he decided to move to California, he sold it to my grandfather. So what did, what did Hargis do? He started the Grand Diamond Business School. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, other than what I was told today. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't have any of the history of the, of the, Hargis, the Hargis family in the Hargis house. But Andrew Hargis had a <coughs> business college, and your grandfather had a stationery. I mean, you kind of wonder if maybe they met that way. I mean, because the, the college would need paper yeah, and that kind of stuff. Well, the stationery companies were in Omaha, so I don't know if that would have, hmm. uh, to my knowledge, he did not own a stationery company in, in Grand Island. In 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 okay. They were also business, business people who were called in for like different things that they were doing in the town. Sure. And so they were on committees together, and that shows up in, in some of the books that I've got. Yep. Uh -huh. So they knew each other. So there are some pictures in this handout of, uh, of my grandfather um, and my uncle and my father uh, standing in front of the house. Um, we have some other pictures we're going to go through uh, now that you have this interest um, and, uh, and send some more pictures. I have some, some other, I have, and they are not in this handout. Uh, I have some very nice pictures of my grandmother that we can we can send to you, uh, so you can have you can have those. Here, tell them the Yeah, I was getting ready. To go. <laughs> so, in, in trying to, one of the things I was asked about to do is some of the maybe some of the memories my father had of of growing up here, and so. Over the years, he had shared a number of little anecdotes um, about what they sort of what they did in the house. So one of the things that my father talked about, since I can since I can remember him telling stories, is he would ride his tricycle in the uh, tourist room. I also from some of the stuff my father wrote down before he died, um, he actually would take his tricycle up into the attic mm -hmm. and ride his tricycle around around the attic. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> and, and I will tell you, we just happened to find the attic about <laughs> a month ago, because <laughs> we're redoing the windows upstairs, and there was always this where you could get in but we've not gotten into it, and, and it's huge. I mean, there could be a fourth floor. It's, the ceilings are probably nine feet tall, mm -hmm. and, and it's got wood on it, so he could ride his tricycle. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I don't doubt it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we decided when we were in the turret, we're gonna find a tricycle that was born about 1923, when he was three years old, and we're going to have it up there in that room eventually. Yeah. So it'd be the one that it's the top third floor where it's just yeah, a big circle. Third floor to our, to our, not the fourth. <laughs> now, now, to give you an idea how much my father must have loved his tricycle, when he was three years old, he rode it across town. <laughs> what kind of work did you do, and was it in a family business? I'm sorry. What kind of work did you do, and was it a family business? What did I do? Yeah. Uh, so now we're jumping ahead a little bit. Um, uh, I was basically in the insurance business. Uh, employee benefit consulting is what I did. It was not a family business. 
I'll give you a little history about my father as well, so you can sort of see. So I did not inherit some of my father's um, intellectual genes. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I owned my own company for a number of years and ended up retiring. When did I retire? 2018. 2018. Uh, one of the other memories my dad had, and we have actually pictures of, of my grandfather and my, 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 my dad and uncle. And there's some other pictures. I think there's one in the handout with my grandmother in there as well. They like to take pictures in front of some of the trees. Uh, one of the stories was my father was standing, and I don't know which tree it was, I wish I did, uh, standing in front of a tree yelling out that he's now four years old. <laughs> uh, some of the other things my dad remembered uh, about growing up, uh, uh, my grandfather obviously liked smoking cigars. So he would smoke cigars and he would cut out articles in the newspaper with his pen knife. Um, and my dad, my dad remembered, remembered that. Uh, my dad learned how to hunt. Uh, his father uh, loved to hunt. Uh, they would vacation in Colorado every, every summer. Um, and so they, he learned how to hunt rabbits and grouse and, and, and other birds. Uh, he also remembered they, they had tickets to every Nebraska home game, so they, they, oh, they, yay, they, went, to, uh, they went to all the home, they all went to all the home games. Uh, the, the, the first time I remember Dad talking about Nebraska football was when we got our first TV. I think I was I think I was eight years old, 1958, and so I I grew up being a Husker fan. Yay! And, uh, <laughs> And unless they play North Carolina State, <laughs> I will root for them. Uh, his, uh, my dad's father uh, also taught him how to play chess, uh, how to play golf, how to shoot. Uh, my dad was on the golf team. Uh, he was extremely good at chess. And like I just said, they went out to all of those home football games. Uh, when they went to Colorado, they would vacation in Estes Park, which strangely enough, and I did not know this until I was doing research for putting this together, uh, our next stop is Estes Park. Oh. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll enjoy seeing that, although last I knew the public road is uh, closed. <coughs> Due to snow drifts, so it will be sort of interesting to see what we what we find. He remembered the dust storms of the 30s, and then one of his worst memories was having to move out of this house. After that, uh, my my grandmother was teaching piano to try to make enough money. Uh, both my uncle and my father were uh, relatively intelligent. Uh, my dad was valedictorian of the high school here. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, junior high here. By then, uh, my uncle and my father had gotten full scholarships to Worcester College in Ohio. Uh, and so my dad moved there when he was 16. Uh, both my uncle was valedictorian at Worcester. My father was valedictorian also at, uh, at Worcester uh, Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, my dad went on uh, after the after World War. My, both my uncle and my father served in World War II. Uh, my uncle was enlisted. Uh, my father was commissioned officer. Uh, after the war, you were asking this question, so I'm trying to give you a little bit of background. Uh, after the war, uh, my father was a geology student at Worcester. Uh, his geology professor at Worcester, unbeknownst to my father, got him a full ride scholarship to Columbia University for both his master's and PhD in geology. Uh, uh, my father went on to become a relatively well-known, uh, renowned geologist, uh, not only in the country, but uh, sort of worldwide. Uh, so he was, he was famous in his own right. He was, wasn't in business. He never had a, had a desire to go down, to go down that road. Uh, my uncle went into business, I went into business, um, but my father went down the, the academic 
the academic road. He, uh, he ended up writing, I think, 15 books, uh, several hundred articles. Um, some of his books are still in publication. In fact, I still get royalties from some of the books that he wrote back in the 1980s. Small royalties. <laughs> Uh, my father, my mother, my, my mother unfortunately died when she was 69 years old. Um, I have two, two siblings, uh, a sister that's two and a half years older than I am, and a younger sister that's two and a half years younger than I am. My uncle had two daughters. Uh, one is the exact same age as my older sister, the other one is my age. And we saw the oldest one on our way out here. We're, we're from South Carolina. Uh, and so we're headed out west and then obviously going back east. Uh, but we stopped in Houston. Uh, my cousin there uh, uh, had a chance to talk to her and one of the things she wanted was some information from this uh, little, uh, little talk that I'm doing. So we'll try to, try to share that because they don't have, we took some of these pictures to my cousin and they didn't have any of these pictures. Uh, so she had not seen seen any of any of this. Uh, so that was that. That's sort of nice to do. And we've shared some other pictures with my with my other cousin. Uh, so my mom died in 1993 when she was 69. My dad passed away in 19. And I'm sorry, 2018 mm -hmm. at 96. He was the ill. He was the only. He's the only man other than me now. Uh, that made it past the age of 65. Mm -hmm. okay. Again, if anyone has any any questions, I'll try to. If I can't answer, I'll tell you. If I can't answer, yes. I don't have a question, but I was contacted one day uh, about a relative of my husband's. Her name is Emma Mettenbrink, and it was discovered that Emma Mettenbrink, who never married, <coughs> was a housekeeper here at the Harvest House during the time that the Coates lived. Here. Oh, wow. ah. I knew they had a housekeeper. She never. Now you know her name. <laughs> and, and I did give a picture to the member. You probably have it. Too. I gave a picture probably to Marty. Marty probably has it. Yeah, I gave a picture to Marty, the one that contacted me, because she found some information about Emma Mettenbrink working here at the Hargis House and it was she said it was during the time period that Coates lived here and I asked some of the older relatives that are still living the Mettenbrinks and they said she never as far as they know she never lived in the house she lived on the, on the farm here in town but she came here to work and was a housekeeper here. Hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Anything I can try to answer that I haven't said? I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but you, your grandmother and your dad and your uncle, they couldn't afford the house, so your grandmother went to Ohio, is that where she ended up? They didn't go there until, um, let me get Days, I not much enough. Um, they moved. They moved to Worcester in 1938. Okay. So four years after my grandfather died, she tried to keep up the house. They ended up moving. Uh, some of the information I have from my father is they moved to another house on Second Street. Uh, but I don't have that address. I don't know. I don't know where it was or what it was or anything so else. So what got him to go to that to to Ohio? Did they know some? Did your grandmother know someone? Some I I no. He wouldn't have because he would have been. He was deceased by the time. I don't I don't know the story of how they learned about Worcester College, okay. uh, which in Ohio is. I mean, it's a very very good college. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they learned it from. Uh, a high school counselor or, or something of something of that nature. I don't have that information. I wish I did, but I don't know that story. Uh, but somehow they both got scholarships and that's why they moved. Wow. Who did they sell the house to? You know? I don't know. 
They sold it to a choir factor. And then the choir factor sold it to the church, the church. Trinity Lutheran Church. The church. And then in 1953, the Women's Club bought it. Oh. Sure. That's why that's Yeah. Mm -hmm. There used to be a staircase yeah. there. Yeah. And the church took out the staircase and built the altar. Do you know what year that was? They took out the staircase. It had to have been in the 40s. I must have seen pictures of the original staircase, not the original one, because I, when I first moved here in my 20s, I came and seen this house, but I thought the staircase was in it then, but it must not have been. It was took out in the 40s. Yeah. The original staircase. I would, it was, it would have been the 40s, the church bought it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Because at one time I came for one tour, they had all the pictures, and they had a picture of the original, still out there. Of the original staircase. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the pictures he has are outside, which back then they didn't have flash, so everything was probably outside. Yeah. And we've got a lot of them up there above the window. Okay. And I don't know where you're at. If you look at them really closely, you can see how all the filigree there used to be a lot more filigree. This area was totally different. As big as this was here, I just can't believe they tore out that staircase to put it all over there. <laughs> you know, you wonder that, you look back and you go, why wouldn't they do that to this house? But we've all probably moved into a house where we can make renovations. Yeah, and at the time, it was. And they say when the church held services, they would put a blanket over that picture. Because God progressed. You did say that. There was no blanket over all three of them. Christ City Thun that's still on Grand Avenue. Oh, is that third? Oh, the third picture. Bob was the one who popped a hook over here. He's the one that. You put the. That was my job on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Covered the windows. Cover the windows. <laughs> it's from the. That's the war. From here. You know, from the street. Yeah. I've got the Harvest Order Church in the state. I was reading the article. No, not from Illinois. I think it was. Really? Yeah. It all came with it, and this is, came in in 1898, and their baby wasn't born yet. So, no. no, this is this is rough. Yeah. No, it's still there. It's a bit closer. Yeah. It's, this is mythology. This is mythology. Yeah. That's all it is. Does anybody have any more questions for Eric? They got up at 6 o'clock this morning. They're all here. Do you have a dad? Sandy, what? Did your dad have an inside tricycle and an outside tricycle? I have no idea. Because it would be an adventure to get it from clear up there to go to the other side. It would not surprise me if he had one and he just carried it around. <laughs> well, that third floor turret room is so round, I think that would give a perfect yeah, lot of fun. You block the doorway and you get in line. Well, we just want to thank, especially all of the women who belong to the Hargis House, thank you for doing all the things you have to so we can raise money, so we can continue renovations on this house because we, we know how much work you do, and thank you for that. We want to invite those of you who are not members of the Hargis House to join us if you would like. I think they have some membership applications back there, and men can actually be a member, so it's called a friend of the Hargis House. Um, and then especially we want to thank Eric and Barbara 
Thank you for sharing. I'll tell you a quick story about the book. The cousin I mentioned, uh, Neelai, goes by Nick Coates. Uh, he helped to, uh, he, he, he built a lot of Aspen, uh, uh, Aspen, Colorado, back back years and years ago. He was a, a well-known construction guy. And so he was relatively well off. And so I can't remember exactly how many years ago he was doing research about our great-grandfather and he found this author and he paid her to put this book together and write it. So, oh, wow. I can find it on Amazon. It's called Memory of Life. 